section 322. So uh, we just solved the uh, potential for this uh, by just writing down an equation that happened to solve the boundary conditions for a completely different problem. And um, so let me just kind of recap. So we have a charge plus Q, a distance D over some infinite plane. It goes on forever. Okay. So, um, and, and the potential at the plane is zero, the potential at infinity is zero. So, and then we have the solution that the potential is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught Q over square root of X squared plus Y squared plus X minus D squared minus Q over the square root of X squared plus Y squared plus X plus D squared, which is the same potential uh, for if we had solved the problem, we had plus Q up here and minus Q down there, uh, distance D. Okay. So now that we have the, the potential, we can calculate sigma, the surface charge density on the plane. And so we have this neat little equation that says the um, derivative with respect to the voltage, uh, the potential over the normal of a conductor is simply equal to minus sigma over epsilon naught of the surface charge density on that on that conductor surface. And that came from section 2.53. If you want to review that video, you're certainly encouraged to. Write that down. Okay. Um, now, in this case, the normal is Z, right? So this is the same as saying, I'm going to use a lot more room over here. DV by DZ is equal to minus sigma over epsilon naught. And we're solving for sigma, so basically sigma is going to be equal to minus epsilon naught uh, dv by dz, which when we differentiate this, we get epsilon naught, one over four pi epsilon naught. And let's be careful with our um, derivatives here. Um, I actually took more time than I care to admit uh, solving this one. So we're taking the derivative of something over something to the negative one half power. So we have negative one half times Q over that thing, X squared plus Y squared plus X minus D squared uh, times the derivative of this thing in the middle. So that's two times X minus D and these twos cancel. And we subtract negative one half. Oh, this is actually to the negative three halves. Okay, so now we have negative one half times Q minus a minus, so a plus, basically. This is messy, I'm sorry about this. Uh, X squared plus Y squared plus X plus D squared, the three halves. We take the derivative of this, so that's just two X, so these twos cancel, so we just get Q X plus D, I'm sorry. And the derivative of, of z, 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 okay. I've completely botched this one, but I, I think it's salvageable. You'll still understand what's going on. I'm, the reason why I'm so, um, I'm actually excited. I love the conclusion of this theorem. And we're going to talk more about kind of its implications in a bit. Um, so basically, we simplify these. We get, uh, so we have a, a minus z and a plus z, so these z's cancel. So we have a minus minus d, so we have a plus qd on top here. And we have a plus qd over here. And we're looking at the surface, so we set z equal to zero. So we get minus epsilon naught, one over four pi epsilon naught. So we have plus qd over x squared plus y squared plus, well, zero minus d squared. Well, that's just d squared x squared plus y squared plus zero plus d squared, that's just d squared, so we get um, x squared plus y squared plus d squared to the three halves, which I think is in agreement. So let's cancel out some terms. So, all right, I'm panicking right now because I see a plus. Uh, where'd the negative sign come from? So we had negative epsilon, negative q, negative one half, um, that's definitely positive. That's positive. Where'd my negative signs go? I don't know. Um, uh, 
negative q times negative d, negative q times z. This one was negative and negative. This is positive. It's positive q times z, positive q times d. So we get two qds. We get two of these, and it's positive, and that's negative. And that's not supposed to be... Oh, no, no, it is. Yes, I'm right. I am so right. It is supposed to be negative charge to counteract the positive charge. So my notes were wrong yet again. Um, and so we cancel out some terms here, cancel out that and that. We cancel out a two here. Uh, I kind of want to keep that. I like that too. Ah, no, he's gone. Five two. Okay, it's equal to Q D over two pi times X squared plus Y squared plus D squared to the three halves. Okay. And so when the, the maximum for this occurs when the minimum denominator occurs, which is when you have x and y to be zero. So right in the center there, you have the maximum charge density. And um, outside, so you see it should be, yeah, that's right, squared, just, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just checking the units here. So you have squares of distances, square root, so that's distance cubed, and you have distance on top, so it's over the distance squared, which is, you know, charge per unit area. So it creates this kind of shadow, circular shadow effect, um, which basically starts um, here, maximum at the surface, then it kind of spreads out in a circle. Okay. Now, um, suppose we want to char calculate the total charge, and I'll just do this over here. It's a, it's a quick calculation. So this is just the same as uh, sigma dA. Um, so we could do it in Cartesian coordinates, but I'm going to do it in circular coordinates substituting, and I do need a new piece of paper actually, so let's, let's do that. So, so we have Q equals the integral of the surface charge density times the area at the point that the surface charge density uh, integral is. So we have R squared is equal to X squared plus Y squared, and theta is, is uh, uniform, so then our dA becomes R d R d theta. And um, so then we have Q equals the integral of sigma, where we're substituting R squared for X plus Y squared. So you have Q D over two pi R squared plus D squared to the three halves. And the DA is R D R D theta. And we break this out. So there's no theta components here. So we just have D theta. And then we have integral of q d r d r over 2 pi r squared plus d squared to the 3 halves. And so this becomes 2 pi because we're doing all the, the angles. Um, the, so we can just basically cancel out 2 pi over 2 pi. Pulling that out, q is constant, d is constant. Uh, everything else is not r d r over r squared plus d squared to the halves. So we're going to do substitution. And you know, for fun, for funsies, I, I tried several different substitutions. Um, the one that I liked the most was when I substituted u is equal to 1 over the square root of r squared plus d squared. And so du is equal to the square root of that. So it's negative 1 half times 1 over r squared plus d squared to the 3 halves. And you have to take the derivative of the inside too, so you get the 2r at the top, dr. Wow, that's like exactly the same. So basically, these two cancel, um, except you got a negative sign there, which um, should have appeared because the charge is negative. After all that work talking about the negative charge, I forgot to write it down. Okay, so it is negative. Negative, negative, negative. Negative, negative, negative. Okay? So our du is equal to minus r dr over r squared plus d squared, the three halves. So we get equals to a oh, different color. Qd, the integral of du. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? And that becomes equal to qd. Well, the integral of du is just u evaluated between well, we're going from r equals zero to infinity, so we kind of need to substitute in there. 
Uh, so we get q d of 1 over square root of infinity squared plus d squared. And we get minus 1 over the square root of 0 squared plus d squared. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a square root, okay. And so as you can see, this one's going to go to 0. And this one's going to go to 1 over square root of d squared equals 1 over d. Okay, so we get um, or, so we get equal to qd. This negative sign goes up here, so it's negative q. Where did the q come from anyway? Oh, that's the original charge. Oh, ha! I'm done. <laughs> Yet another surprising result. So I, I guess now that you see the result that the, the charge on the surface is negative the charge above the surface, um, it kind of sounds like, oh, of course it has to be that way. Um, and that's pretty much all there is to that. So that was kind of fun.